Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and today I have a pile of possibilities for the first quarter of Historathon 2023. So Historathon 2023 is going to be a year-long event uh, where we are going to be looking at or reading history, history books. Um, and the event is split up into four quarters, and each quarter looks at a certain period of time. Uh, the first quarter, January through March, looks at prehistory up to 500 CE. Um, so I figured I'd show uh, the pile of possibilities that I have to read during those three months. I don't, I won't get to all of these things, uh, but there's some that I'm definitely getting to. Um, and, you know, obviously the rest are, are a little bit undecided here. Um, now, except for two that I just got in the mail, um, I am sticking to books that I already had on my shelves. Uh, one of my, one of the impetuses for creating this event, um, which I am so happy that so many other people are coming along you know, coming along with me on this journey, um, was I had uh, decided to do the Read What You Own Challenge, um, 50 books, um, because I have a lot of unread books uh, on my shelves here. You can see the books back here on that case, and also the books that are in boxes. Those are basically my TBR. So I've got probably about 300 books um, that I own, but I have not read. So I decided that I would read 50 books, 50 physical books that I already own, um, before I would be buying books again. But I did allow myself one out with that, um, and that was I could buy basically a book a month, a uh, new book, just so I can make sure I can take part in um, certain read-alongs or reading events uh, or buddy reads. But it was really limited to one. Um, so <clears throat> I got two books in the mail, and that was basically covering two months. Uh, <laughs> so that is the only exception. Otherwise, I am focusing on books that I already own. Um, that are on my shelves for this event. Um, so two that I hope to get to in January. Once again, the time frame that we're talking about is prehistory up to 500. Um, I think in January, I'm going to read this one here, um, Antiquity, From the Birth of Sumerian Civilization to the Fall of the Roman Empire by Norman F. Cantor, um, which I've never read anything by Norman F. Cantor. I know that his In the Wake of the Plague, I believe, is pretty popular. Um, this one came out in the early 2000s, and it's one that's been sitting on my shelf for a very, very long time unread. So I figured this is the time to finally get through this one. And it'll be a nice, I think, survey um, reminder. I mean, of course, I had studied a lot of these things in college, but I hate to say that, that was about 20 years ago. Um, so I haven't read about Samaria in a very, very long time. <coughs> so this will be, I think, a pretty good, um, a pretty good refresher on things so that I can then go deeper into uh, specific histories. Um, the other thing that I want to get to in January is this one here, The Peloponnesian War by Donald Kagan. Uh, last year, I had read Thucydides, um, his uh, history of the Peloponnesian War, or at least what he wrote before he died. Um, and in uh, February, which I'll be showing the books in a moment, I'm going to be reading Xenophon, which one of those books finishes Thucydides, so also dealing with the Peloponnesian War. Um, so I figured I should get a pretty good understanding of the war. So, of course, I'm not only relying on, you know, more than 2,000-year-old documents to try and figure out what happened. Uh, so that is what this is. Um, so the war really between Athens and Sparta. Uh, so this will be my other January read for the event. Um, and like I said, February, I am going to be doing a buddy read with uh, Mark from Book Time with Elvis, um, also in a subscriber, uh, Stephanie. We're going to be going through probably two. Um, we haven't 100% said definitely two, uh, but I think we're going to go through both Xenophon's works. Um, so I just got this in the mail today. Uh, the Landmark Xenophon's and a Basis. Uh, and I do love these editions. Uh, they're really nice. They have... Um, they have helpful maps, they have helpful notes in the margins, uh, footnotes, not end notes. I love seeing the footnotes, I don't have to keep going back and forth. Um, they do have illustrations to help it along. Uh, like I said, also they usually have very terrific maps as well. Um, so we're going to be reading uh, Anabasis. And also, I think, I have this one in soft cover, I got this one yesterday in the mail, um, Hellenica. Uh, which I think this is like a general history of of ancient of Greece, um, which I know it maybe isn't as focused as some of his other works, uh, but this is more of a 
a war narrative, um, which is supposed to be a pretty exciting read. Uh, so I look forward to those, and those will be my focus for February. So March, um, I want to move forward a little more in time, I think. Uh, I am looking at some things on maybe um, Alexander the Great, and also I want to try and get something in on ancient Rome. Um, so the two things I have for Alexander the Great, I've got, as a maybe, I've got uh, Alexander the Great by Paul Cartledge. Um, and I also have Philip and Alexander, um, Kings and Conquerors by Adrian Goldsworthy. That looks at not just Alexander, but the father and son. Um, so this is, this is a chunker of a book. Um, I'm not sure which one. Just in time, I'm thinking I probably might end up getting to this one first before I get to this one, but they're both possibilities for March. Um, I know March of the Mammoths is also in March, and I don't know if that's quite long enough for that. Um, some other options that I'm looking at, uh, these deal with Rome. So I've got, <coughs> excuse me, The Fires of Vesuvius, Pompeii Lost and Found by Mary Beard. I had read Mary Beard's uh, SPQR, I guess, a little over a year ago now, and I, I did like it quite a bit. Um, so this is her book about Pompeii. Uh, so that's a possibility. Um, got a little shorter work, Alaric the Goth, uh, An Outsider's History of the Fall of Rome. So, um, you know, it, looking at, I guess, the fall of Rome from a, a Gothic perspective, uh, which seems really interesting. It looks like it would be a pretty swift read as well. And the last one that I have here, um, at least on these shelves, uh, is this one, AD 381, Heretics, Pagans, and the Dawn of the Monotheistic State by Charles Freeman. Um, so really looking at, uh, you know, basically the emergence of Christianity in the Roman Empire. So those are all possibilities for March. I have not settled on any of them yet. Uh, I'm thinking maybe that cartilage book right now I'm leaning on and trying to get one of those um, Roman Empire, or Roman history books as well. Uh, but those are my plans uh, so far for uh, the first three months of Historathon 2023. Um, if you've read any of these, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you want to participate, um, we do have a boxer group that's been going that myself or any of the co-hosts will certainly be uh, happy to to add you to. Um, their information will be down in the description below, as well as mine, my boxer information. So that's probably the easiest way to get in touch with us. If you're taking part, um, you want to share what you're reading, uh, please comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Um, but yeah, that's that's my plan, at least at this point. Um, as always, thank you, Booktube.